Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. If you're looking for more information about seller closing costs, you're in absolutely the right place. What you'll learn from this video are nine common costs to selling a home, and you'll learn a few extra tips along the way. So if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, like this video, and go ahead and grab a pen and paper. You might wanna take some notes. My name is Andrew Finney, and I'm I'm your real estate geek and I'm happy to explain this information to you. If at any time you have questions, please simply leave them in the comment section below. So let's go ahead and kick right into it with what are seller closing costs? Cost number one is actually the loan payoff amount. So the loan payoff amount is the amount that you owe on your loan from the amount that you purchased your home. So let's say that you bought a house for $500,000 and you put a 20% down payment on it. That means your loan value whenever it was brand new was $400,000. So if you've owned that home for 10 years and may have paid it down an additional $100,000, then your loan payoff amount would be around $300,000. For the best amount on your loan payoff amount, contact your mortgage service provider and ask them for your loan payoff amount and please have that available for the real estate agent you choose to work with. Cost number two is actually your transfer tax. Transfer taxes are imposed by your state and local governments for the real property transfer tax portion of selling your home. For example, in Las Vegas, Nevada, our real property transfer tax is roughly $5.10 per thousand. So if you had a $300,000 home and you were selling your home and it sold for $300,000, then you would be paying $5.10 per thousand, so $5.10 times 300 would equal roughly $1,530 as a seller closing cost in the real property transfer tax. Check with your local real estate consultant about what your real property transfer tax amount is to know more about that. Cost number three is actually the title insurance. A lot of sellers will pay their own title insurance premiums to ensure that the title is actually free and clear of what are called clouds, which are simply defects or liens against the title. They do this to further identify themselves in the transfer of it to make sure the buyer can't come back on them. It, the liability would go to the title company that said that the title was free and clear. It's always a good idea to make sure your title is free and clear prior to uh, selling your home, and you can get that done by a preliminary title report as well. So the next cost, number four, that you would have are the attorney fees. Now the attorney fees are gonna be specific to the states that actually use attorneys. Depending on uh, what state you reside in, and go ahead and check with your local real estate consultant, and since you're selling a home, uh, you would already know more than likely if you have attorney fees in your state if you used an attorney whenever you bought the place. So whenever you're looking at the attorney fees, it's important to note that some things are more or less customary across the country for these attorney states. In some states, the seller pays the attorney fees. In some states, the buyers pay the attorney fees attorney fees and in some cases maybe the party split the attorney fee itself so it's important to know and factor that amount into how much your seller closing costs are going to be cost number five is actually the agent commission now there's a reason why i waited to cost tip number five to let you know about the agent commission it's simple because you're going to end up paying for what you get and performance and in getting at the best price on your property and there's a lot of things out there in the market right now that you may have heard of specifically um you hear a lot of people saying what an average commission is and as much as i would love to tell you what an average commission is across the united states i am not able to legally do that underneath the sherman antitrust act I don't, I don't want to violate that law and lose my license, so I'm unable to do that. What I can share with you is the best rule of thumb to plan for anywhere between 6% and 10% in seller closing costs. It's all going to be dependent upon the negotiation that you have with your agent that's going to be listing your home. Keep in mind, you're going to pay for what you get. You have a lot of different providers out there and a lot of new tech companies that are coming into the marketplace right now trying to entice sellers to sell their property to them. They're enticing you with saying, we'll give you a cash offer for your home and you can move out whenever you want to move out. Out. I want you to consider something. Where are they getting the money at? Well, the only way that a company is going to be able to do that is if they have investment capital coming off of Wall Street or coming out of private in investors. And if they're doing that, how? what is the likelihood they're going to offer you fair market value, true fair market value for your home? Because they're going to have to get a return on that money. And if they're going to get a return on that money, they're going to have to sell that home immediately after they give you a cash purchase, won't they? So consider that because it's really important to note whenever you start hearing things, especially if you're in the Nevada marketplace, if you're in the Arizona marketplace, or if you're in the Florida marketplace, and some places in California right now, you're gonna hear a lot of stuff about uh, 
offer pad and open door and then across the nation you have Zillow instant offers now I'm still doing my due diligence on offer pad and open door and I will be absolutely making a video about both of those companies for my preliminary research that I've conducted so far it's not looking too sharp for a seller and the reason being is the commissions that they're saying are actually higher when you start looking at their terms and conditions of their service something for you to investigate in I'm not knocking them if it's right for you by any means everybody has a different way they want to sell their home and for different reasons I'm just want you to be well aware of what the true cost is and whether you're selling your home at a discount or not so just just keep that in mind and just like I said before you're gonna be paying for what you get a good a great real estate agent that's worth their salt is gonna be making sure they give you a marketing plan of action up front they're gonna be sharing with you um, the tips they are gonna be using to sell your home the cost associated with selling your home and they'll also share with you about the importance of getting professional photography done all of which will be done at the agent's expense with the Commission now the Commission that you're gonna be paying is actually gonna ideally be divided in two so let's say that uh, you and your agent and again this is just a fictitious example but let's say that you and your agent agreed to list your home for sale at a 7% listing commission ideally you would see three and a half percent of the commission going to the seller's broker and three and a half percent of the commission going to the buyer's broker in that example only an example so it's just a fictitious example so keep that in mind and if you have questions about that please leave me a comment in the comment section below send me a direct email I'll make my information available later on in this video and it's always available in the show more description just so you know so cost number six is actually liens against the property do you have any uh, just like a loan payoff it has to be satisfied prior to getting your equity from the property after the cost to sell your home if you have any liens or judgments against your property it's going to be something that has to be paid off as well uh, common liens that people get sometimes are something from the sewer company the trash company or water companies and in the case of sewer and trash depending on how easy it is to actually pay those bills that uh, in where you live that may be one of the reasons why that lien may exist I've seen it several times where sellers just didn't know they actually had that lien they thought they were paying it and they weren't paying it and then it had to be satisfied and they're like oh okay my mistake let's go ahead and get that paid for it and move it forward so if you have any judgments against your property from an HOA or any judgments against your property from a lawsuit or something those will have to be satisfied at the time that you sell your property as well and one of the best ways again to check on that information is to talk to your real estate agent about getting a preliminary title report prior to going on market just to making just to make sure everything is done it normally only takes between one and three days for an agent to get that back from a title company Cost number seven are the repairs that need to be completed after the buyers uh, in their buyer due diligence period order the home inspection they want to make sure that they are gonna they're going to probably ask you for some of the big stuff the cosmetic stuff may not be that big of an issue and then depending on how your purchase offers are written in your estate it may not even be a, a factor but if you have things that need to be fixed and an AC unit or you know there's something going on that needs to be fixed with the roof or anything like that you're gonna need to probably fix those depending on the loan type it could fall underneath a health and safety condition all health and safety conditions are on top of the repair request because it's a condition to funding the loan if you have questions about that please let me know there's a lot of stuff that go into the cost of this that can be either uh, in your favor or not in your favor now I always recommend that a seller get a pre listing home inspection and the reason being is that if you get a pre listing home inspection completed you'll have a better idea of what your what the home inspector is going to come in with you can go ahead and make all those repairs up front and in making all those repairs up front it will minimize your time on market minimize the, any kind of stress that may be involved with selling your home and make it a lot fluid more fluid and easy by just simply offering that home inspection report to the buyer say hey this is what the home inspector said these are the things that we did and here are the receipts for the work that was completed does that satisfy your your need for a home inspection in a lot of cases where I say yes and then you move right on to the next phase now cost number eight you want to consider are the terms of the contract now the terms of the contract are where the big kickers and the expense of selling your home can be you know uh, the smaller expense would be something like pest inspections for VA home loans VA home loans a veteran is not able to pay for a pest inspection and specifically that of a termite inspection now most termite inspections I don't know what, how much they cost in your location but where we are in Las Vegas Nevada they're roughly 70 to 80 dollars for a pest inspection it's not a big to do for the pest inspection another thing to note 
is that with VA loans, a veteran is not, al not allowed to pay for the escrow fees, so that is another cost that you'll absorb on that. The rest of it's a lot the same, and it's very easy to work with a veteran, active duty, or anybody else for that matter. It's just about understanding the terms of the contract. Now, if that buyer asked you for buyer closing costs, now that's something that can dramatically increase the cost to sell. Buyer closing costs are generally between 2% and 4% of a sales price. So if you're selling your home and it's a $300,000 home, then a buyer's closing cost could be anywhere between six and eight thousand dollars um, to close on that loan and they may ask you as a seller for that you need to be prepared for that and make up your mind whether you're going to be offering any type of concessions to a buyer if it's the right buyer at the right price let's say and make sure that you're getting everything done and you understand that clear snapshot now your listing agent should absolutely be preparing an estimated net proceeds for you uh, breaking down the cost to sell your property before you list your property and also every offer that you get in they should be submitting a estimated uh, breakdown for how much money you could expect to walk away with on an estimated basis and doing so you'll have a better idea of which offer is best for you to accept with your life plans and moving forward now cost number nine is actually uh, prorations if you have any prorations through your HOA if you live in an HOA community uh, the property taxes that need to be brought current or if you paid them uh, all for the year let's say then you get a credit back on that uh, the utility prorations again if you prepaid your utilities you'll get the credited back that amount as well and there's other prorations out there that you can talk to your local real estate agent about to know more about that as well and the title company as well so a couple of key points that you want to take into consideration are obviously the loan payoff amount you want to know whether you're in an, in an attorney state and how much it's going to cost the agent commission and checking for any type of uh, liens against your property one more point about the loan payoff is actually if you have a home equity line of credit that is actually going to be considered part of the payoff amount as well so keep that in mind so if you have any questions about this please let me know and just like we began at the top of this video if you have any questions contact me now i'm putting my information up and if you haven't already done so please go ahead and subscribe to the channel like this video and share it around because we never know who it might be able to help thank you so much for watching today and enjoy a great day